So that was peer-to-peer -peer lending. I'm just curious, how many people here have participated in peer-to-peer -peer lending, have actually lent money? You want to put their hands up? Interesting, a few of you, interesting. So many of the examples of the sharing economy that we've looked at over the last two days have been about sharing assets, sharing tangible goods, things that we have lying around that maybe we're not using that we make to want to make a return on or at least make available to other people. But we've also touched on the sharing economy and how it can build experiences that we can share with each other. Cedric Georgi has founded Cookening, which connects people and culture through food. And he's here to talk a little bit about how that all happens. Please welcome him on stage. All right. Um, well, I hope you're having a good digestion. I know I'm talking about food here, so I hope you're not starving as well. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Cookening, and as Ben explained, we're a platform allowing people to share a home-cooked meal. But I will, I will talk a little bit later about this. I want to share a vision with you, because it's almost the end of the web, and I thought it would be good to go back to a specific question. What's the biggest impact of the sharing economy? And I have a vision about it, and I'm convinced the biggest impact we will have all together with all these platforms, all the users, uh, being active within the sharing in the community is we will connect culture. So if we, if we, if we look at what are the big impacts, I have um, I've identified three, and the two first ones, um, you'll, you'll see them, but perhaps the, the biggest one is we're going back to a life as we had when we all used to live in villages. Uh, because we, we had this habit of sharing items with people within the same village, of connecting to buy like a, a big asset, or um, going from village to village and think travelers um, a few centuries ago when they were traveling, how do they eat? Well, they just had uh, an open door through the, during the way and they had a lunch and that was it. So when I explain the sharing economy to people that have no idea about it, I always explain it's as in villages a few centuries ago. And so, but the main impact we'll have, the first one is environmental. So you've heard a lot about it, so we will use less items, we will use them in a better way, we share cars, we uh, um, have a road together, I mean, we're peer-to-peer -peer, um, driving, so we, we use less items and we use them in a better way. The second impact is economical. On, and it's on two sides. On one side, we're, the sharing economy is allowing people to buy or to, or to pay services cheaper. Think Airbnb, that's the best example. I'm here in London, I'm renting a room for 17, 70 uh, euros a night. If I had to pay for a hotel, it would have been double that price. So I, get, uh, I, I spend less money. And on the other side, uh, people can get money, either because they rent a room, or they will share a meal, or they will provide a task on all this task rabbit and, and, and co. Uh, but the last one, and this is the one I will, I will focus on, is social. There is no sharing economy, there is no collaborative economy without people. It may sound obvious, but it's the main impact we're having, is we're allowing people to um, share. So we, and before going into details, we live in silos. I will give you my example how I know and how I connect with people on a, on, a, on a regular basis. Well, I know people from school in the past, and the thing is, all people from school are pretty much the same. Actually, I did an engineer school, I did a business school, and now all these guys, we're pretty much, like we're all uh, ent uh, entrepreneurs or uh, have uh, like uh, big business or we're working at big companies and we get quite a good amount of money even if I'm an entrepreneur actually I'm not part of this group but still the same kind of guy family the same thing uh, okay we have different jobs but we're coming from the same culture from the same area so I keep I, I stay with people that are that have the same culture work I won't talk about it I mean I've been in the work I and mean, in the web industry for the past seven years so all the people I meet are techies web media guys, I don't, did, I don't meet lawyers, artists, because I, I stay within my work environment. And the last one that is perhaps the most um, uh, open to other people is hobbies. But still, 
Let's, okay, this is Slack's line, by the way. This is a hobby I have. I really in, invite you to test it. Very cool. Um, but let's think golf. Golf, when you're playing golf, it's like a specific type of players. So perhaps upper classes, uh, and you won't meet different people from different cultures. And I really believe the sharing economy helps us uh, connect with different people, different cultures. And there are three main categories that are very interesting. The first one is people from different social classes. Because when I'm sharing, when I'm uh, swapping an item, when I'm renting a car from someone else, uh, well, I have the opportunity, a unique opportunity, to meet people from different backgrounds and different um, social classes. So I'm here in England. Uh, by the way, this is a very famous show you had um, uh, back in the days. I had no idea about it, but I wanted to find something for you guys. Um, so different social classes. Uh, secondly, different ages. How often in a week or in a month do you speak with older people that are not your grandparents? We don't share with, the, with these people anymore. Uh, I'm 30 years old, and I think perhaps once a month I have a contact with a lady, uh, old lady that is perhaps 70 or 80 years old, even if we don't have to speak about lady ages, as you know. Uh, and I'm just helping her with her bags from the supermarket. But that's it. And these people, from all the times, they have a lot to share. Think about all the things they've experienced, all the things they've, they went through, all the skills they have. Thanks to the sharing economy, um, these people have the platform to, to share with younger generation. And I'm talking about food, I'm coming from France, and uh, something I really want is that all the other people in France that have a strong uh, experience in cooking uh, will be able to share in a better way and won't die, because we're talking about it, won't die with this experience um, without sharing it. Different origins. Um, that's the third one, and this is perhaps the most interesting one, is um, we, we don't meet people from around the world. We, we, for, and as a tourist, for example, even if you're visiting a country, you don't meet people. You're going to France, the two type of guys you will see will be your taxi driver and your concierge at the hotel, and that's it. And when you're a tourist, you want to get the culture. You want to you understand how it's like, and you want to meet with these guys. So all this platform, allow a better mix of, of these um, origins. A few examples um, to, to finish this presentation. Cooking, as I told you, we're a marketplace where cooks, local cooks offer to host a meal for foreigners. But it's also uh, a way, for example, for expats here in London. Uh, we hope we will have more um, expats or people from different origins that will cook for you, um, UK people based in London. This is how it will look like. Look like. Um, it's basically a, a table with people around it. But what's more important than what you have um, in the middle of your table or what you have in your plate is who you will meet. Um, so, sorry, I hate to put picture on, of me on, on the presentation, but um, just to show you how it was uh, during one of the first meals we had in 2012, and we had uh, a meal with my wife with two people from Malaysia. I had no idea about Malaysia. Uh, actually, I think I couldn't even put it on the map. Um, and so they, they went, the two of them, to, um, this woman you can see here and her brother, so, uh, the brother is taking the picture, and we had three hours together to share about our culture, their culture, and um, they told us that after this meal, and this is really what we're focusing with cooking, is that it was the highlight of the trip, because for the unique, it was a unique time they, they entered the culture and the country. But there are other examples, um, so yeah, quickly because I will run out of time. Um, think about it, the meal is a platform for sharing. And uh, in a sense, a meal is just the first offline social media we have. A media is a way to give information and share information, and a meal is just that. So other examples, Blablacar, you had a presentation uh, about trust. Here's Joseph, she's 72 years old, and she's doing once a month, a trip to another city, and she's doing this not only because she, get, she, she wants to get some money uh, to reimburse her trip, she's doing this because it's a unique opportunity for her to meet younger generation. Uh, and that's why she keeps doing that. And she learns a lot from all this young generation. An example we have in France, a very cool startup um, called La Ruche Kidoui. 
I know the name, okay, but um, La Ruche Kiliwi is uh, a way to buy directly food from producers in a um, collaborative way. So you create, create local groups and you buy directly to producers. And these producers, they will give and they will um, deliver you food every week and one specific place and location, sorry. Um, and all the neighborhoods, not all the neighbors will gather, whatever the social classes they're in, whatever the background they are, and they won't just get their food. They will share and talk about food, and perhaps uh, it will be an opportunity to meet neighbors, and they wouldn't have without it. Two last examples are very, very famous, so very quickly, uh, Airbnb, that's perhaps the, the biggest one that allowed people to connect when they were traveling with locals, um, because they were open to anyone. Um, and Couchsurfing is the one that started everything, perhaps focusing more on younger generation and um, backpackers. Uh, I want to give you this example of um, this guy, and I, I forgot the name, but what he did was the Odyssey, or is the Odyssey expedition. Uh, I think his name is Hughes or something like that. And he traveled 201 countries, one after the others, um, and stayed through couch surfing and didn't use any plane. So he was able, thanks to the sharing economy, to get all this people from the different culture and meet them. And I want to finish on something. I want to give you the, 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 the definition of, of um, well, a, a passage of um, what's written in the UNESCO Constitution. Ignorance of each other's ways and lives has been a common call through the history of mankind of that suspicion and mistrust between the peoples of the world through which the difference have all too often broken in the war. So if we fight all together, thanks to the sharing economy, this ignorance between people, well, we have a better world. Thank you.